Okay, so the, the question comes up is, why do we need to actually motion track anything? Well, one of the reasons is about match moving. So what does this mean? This is all about uh, if we want to add any sort of CG elements into live video. Uh, for example, if we want to track some titles into a, to a space or, you know, take it to a big extreme and we'll track giant robots into an action with a huge laser sequence. Um, the other thing that we might want to do with match moving is if we just want to add effects to certain parts of the video. Now, this could be, uh, for example, in secondary color correction, which we'll look at a bit later. Or it could be just blurring out a, a number plate, a car license plate, or, or something of, of that type. So maybe some sort of witness protection shot, you know, uh, that sort of thing. Another really important thing when we're match moving is all about making rotoscoping tasks easier. So what we've got when we're, we're rotoscoping is we've got uh, often large movements going along combined with the natural movement of the camera. Now, this makes drawing masks and tracking masks through quite a, a sort of laborious task. So the next part is all about stabilizing. And this ties in greatly to the rotoscoping stuff that I was just talking about. So the way that uh, it made rotoscoping easier was by taking out half of the movement, which was taking out the camera shake or the object movement there. What stabilizing is going to do is it's going to track part of the image there and make that either rock steady or just smooth that camera motion out to take out the uh, the shakes and the wobbles. Okay, so we've now linked our roto layer to our original track. So let's have a play forward of that and just see how that's looking. And you know, it's, it's not too bad. Um, it's definitely given us a place to, to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back in here and you'll see that as we play this forward, I'm just going to have to make a few adjustments to my mask here. But as you can see, the camera's kind of moving around and jumping about all over the place, and that makes our job a little bit trickier. So just as we did the stabilize before, I'm going to turn stabilize on up here now, and let's just see what that happens there. So now you can see our mat basically stays in place and I can come in and start doing the adjustments to it that I need to do. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to find the best parts to, uh, to start the rotor because we don't want to just start um, anywhere and we don't want to just keep adding keyframes anywhere because that just adds a lot of extra work for us and it makes the keyframes uh, or makes the actual eventual mask uh, a lot worse. So if we turn our mat on there, just have a look, we'll turn the overlays off. So you can see between those two points, we're just a couple of little keyframes. We probably need to tidy that up a little bit there, but we'll we'll get onto that. Okay, so let's continue on to the next part. And there we go. So we can see as we scrub through the footage that it drifts away to a certain point and then kind of drifts back in. We want to add our keyframes at that point of drift that point of maximum drift just there is going to be the port part where we need to uh, to bring in our next keyframe. So let's do that. Let's bring that in there. And I'm just going to then bring that over there. Uh, this has changed quite significantly there. So I'm going to have to just come in, just adjust my Bezier spline just a tiny bit. Cool. And we'll grab that again. And here's a nice little keyboard shortcut for you because you don't want to be, um, you know, moving between tools all the time. So we've got um, a little rotation up here, which if you know the keyboard shortcut for rotation in After Effects is W. It's exactly the same in Mocha as well. So it's rotation. And wherever we click here is going to be our anchor point. So I click down the bottom here and start to move that around. The rotation is going to be anchored around that control point. Uh, I definitely don't want that. Now what I did without um, wanting to change between tools all the time, if I click or press and hold the W key, that will temporarily move me into my rotation tool uh, just for the duration of the time where I've got the uh, W turned back. And then when I let W go again, you'll see it switches back to my main arrow tool, my main selection tool. 